Johnny Costello program, starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Brought to you by Camel, the cigarette of costlier, properly aged tobacco. The Abbott and Costello program, with the modern rhythm of Will Osborne and his orchestra, Iris Adrian, our singing star Connie Haynes, and spotlighting that chunky, chubby little cherub who went caught rubbing floor polish on his Uncle Artie Stebbins' head because he heard it was good for wood, calmly said... I'm a bad boy! Costello. Costello, we bought this gas station four days ago. Are you listening to me? Yeah, I'm listening. Go ahead. We bought this gas station four, <laughs> four days ago. And you, you promised to do half the work. Oh, uh, you've got uh, Lana Turner's car up there on the grease rack. Uh, why aren't you greasing it? Because Lana's turn, Lana Turner's car makes me awfully nervous. Oh, how could Lana Turner's car make you nervous? Well, this is the first time I've ever been close to her chassis. I... <laughs> Look, they'll be after her car in a minute. Now, get it off that hydraulic hoist. And take it easy, please. Okay, okay. All right. Shh. Now, look what you've done. Do you realize that Miss Turner can sue you for damages? Sue me for damage? How, how much more damage does she want? No. Look at the car. Oh, no, you dummy. She can press a suit against you. Oh, she can press a suit against me anytime. Oh. <laughs> you please talk sense. We've got to lift that car up and get it out of there. Uh, where are the jacks? Where are the jacks? Yes, where are the jacks? I quit playing jacks. I couldn't get past my forty. Oh, oh. So you play jacks. I suppose you play tiddlywinks too, don't you? Yes, I do. But I don't want to play no tiddlywinks with you. Why not? Because you play wet and loaded tiddlies. I... <laughs> All the kids told me. What kids? All the kids on Ticket Tepper Street. Now listen, Costello. Uh, Costello. Uh, Costello. Costello. Uh... <laughs> Look, I'm getting fed up with this. You haven't done a lick of work around here in four days. Oh, no. Only this morning I cleaned out that little pantry over there. Pantry? Yeah. That's not a pantry. Now he tells me. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand. Will you listen to me, please? What would they be doing with a pantry and a filling station? Well, I thought maybe that's where they kept the traffic jam. Oh, no. <laughs> Hello. Abbott and Costello service station. Do you have an oversized head gasket? Yes, I have. How do you get your hat on? <laughs> <laughs> that was a very funny joke. I'll pull it on Abbott. Hey, Abbott, do you have an oversized head gasket? No, but I have a new pair of cast iron fender pants. Now, what am I going to do with the hat? <laughs> Now, there you go again. No wonder people don't come into our filling station. If a customer drove in here right now, you wouldn't know what to do. Yes, I would. Yeah, all right. Suppose the man asked for Ethel. Well, what would you tell him? I'd tell him it was a day off. Uh, <laughs> no, you, you... You'd put Ethel in the car. I'd put her in his car. I don't even know that girl. Oh, Ethel is tanked in front of the gas station. Oh, you want me to sober her up? No. Please. You mean the kid's got a little bun on? No, 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 nothing of the kind. Listen She's a little to me. bit tipsy. Will you listen to me, please? We got a drunk girl in front of nothing the gas of station. Nothing of the kind. I'm not talking about that. Look, if a man has a high-speed motor, he wants Ethelteen. He wants what? Ethelteen. That's a new one on me, brother. He wants ethylene. And ethyl is two kinds, ethylene or ethylene. Huh? He could give him ethylene. That's the one I better get to get the laugh. All right, well, get it that way. <laughs> get it the way you want. Go ahead. If, if he wants me to put ethyl on a diet, okay. Now, look, look, look. What would you do if a man drove into our gas station and his motor knocked? I open the door and let it in. No. <laughs> Don't you understand? Don't you understand? He has a mist in his motor. Okay, she can come in, too. Uh, please, just a minute, will you please? The man's motor is missing. Oh, what are you looking at me for? I didn't take it. All right, I, I do go around taking motors, you know. There's other ways of making a buck. All right, I know that. Just forget about it. Look, what, wait a minute. What would you do if a man drove up with a flat tire? I would treat her just like any other lady. Uh, 
you, you don't understand. That's self-service with me. I understand that. I mean a puncture, you nip with a puncture. Do you know what a puncture is? Oh, yeah. A puncture is a hissing sound followed by naughty words. I... <laughs> of all the jokes I ever met, that settles it. Take that uniform off and get out of here. Right here and now, I am going to sever my relations with you. You are? Well, yes. Well, you're at it. I've got an uncle I wish you'd cut up, too. Uh, He's no. the meanest man that I ever... You better never. stop me. He's the meanest well, man Well, you I never ever... mind that. Listen to me. Okay. I mean you're through. Fire. Now, get out of here. Go ahead. You mean I'm all washed up? You heard me. You're firing me, Abbott? You are fired. Please, Abbott. Give me another chance. No, you... never. We're through. Oh, pilgrims. 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 Pilgrim what? Just pilgrims. You stopped my progress. What? Oh, uh, all right. I'll give you another chance. Now, get in that car there and drive it over to the uh, wash rack. It won't start. I tried it. No, what do you mean it won't start? All you have to do is choke your motor. Do what? I said choke your motor. Abbott, do you realize what you're saying? Well, certainly. Choke my motor? Well, that's all you have to do. Do I look like a boy that would choke his own motor? Listen, I don't think you even know where your motor is. Sure I do. She's home with my folder. Your folder? <laughs> your folder? Yeah, they're taking care of my little broder and soda. Oh, stop that selling this. I, I don't think you ever had a car. Oh, certainly I got a car, Rabbit. Only I can't think of the name of it, that's all. And all I know is that it ends with an act. An act? That's the name of my car. It ends it, with an act. Is it a Pontiac? No. Cadillac? No. Now I remember. It's right. a maniac. Maniac? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every time I drive down the street, everybody says, There goes a maniac. <laughs> you, mean <that> old... <laughs> you mean that old broken down jalopy of yours? Do you call that thing a car? What do you mean, broken down jalopy, Abbott? My car's good enough for the army. A big general wants to borrow it. A, a general wants to borrow your car? I don't believe it. Oh, yeah. Here's a note. I got a note right here from him. Look what it says. We'll be around to your house in the morning to pick up your car. Signed, General Finance. <laughs> Tune in on Bud and Lou. And if it's wisdom you want, well, let's go back 2,500 years to wise old Aesop. Experience is the best teacher. Yes, experience is the best teacher. When cigarettes were very scarce not many months ago, most smokers took what they could get. One day, one brand. Another day, some other brand. Now, that experience taught smokers that the costly tobaccos blended in the traditional camel way set camels apart from all others. That fact is proved by today's record demand for camels. As old Aesop also said... Actions speak louder than words. Yes, actions speak louder than words. The actions of today's experienced smokers speak louder than any words about any cigarette. For more smokers are asking for camels today than ever in camel history. Yes, camels are the choice. The choice of millions whose own experience taught them that the expertly blended, costly tobaccos of camels set camels apart. C-A-M-E-L-S Yes, camels are the choice. The choice of experience. And now Camel presents Will Osborne and the orchestra. It's the rhythm of Tampico.
Costello. Hey, Costello, wait on that girl that just drove in. Hurry up. Okay, well, it be, lady. I want some gossip. I'm on my way to the movie studio. I'm working at a picture out at Om G. Om. <laughs> Om G. Om? <laughs> yes. Are you acquainted with any of the actors at Om G. Om? No, but I know the janitor at Republic. <laughs> <laughs> I... That's right near Universal. <laughs> I'm so thrilled. I'm appearing in a new picture. It's all about the African jungles. The African jungles? <laughs> oh, Abby, you know what the jungles are. That's the home of the Jirif and the Tiger. <laughs> That's where the Mount Kays... The Mount Kays? The Mount Kays eat the... Coconuts. <laughs> yes, in one scene, I'm surrounded by savage crocodiles. Crocodiles? <laughs> yes. Have you ever been frightened by a crocodile? No, but I'm, I've been chased by a skunk. <laughs> Young man, are you trying to mock me? No, I like you a lot. I could go for you. Couldn't you go for me? Absolutely. And here I go. Hey, what was the matter with her? I guess I made her maud. <laughs> hey, Costello, is there another car driving in? Hurry up. See what they want. We're doing a nice business here. <laughs> hey, buddy. Huh? Come here. What can I do for you? Shh, not so loud. Yes? Come closer. Yes, sir. How would you like to have a bunch of tires you could sell without priorities? I got a carload of hot tires I could let you have cheap. What? How dare you try to sell me tires without a priority? You are nothing but a crook, a chiseler, and a rat. I have a good notion to report you to the FBI. I am from the FBI. Just checking. <laughs> <laughs> Cheap gas. <laughs> oh, Costello. Here comes your girlfriend leaning against her. Abbott, where is that Costello? I'm going to tear him limb from limb. Get out the DDT. Here comes the Black Widow. <laughs> oh, there you are, you inflated meatball. I asked you to put five gallons of gas in my car, and what did you do? Well, we were out of gasoline, so I poured in a case of 7 Up. <laughs> Costello, why do you do such things? Yes, when I got home, I was all broken up. Well, whoever put you back together again certainly did a swell job. <laughs> all right, stop it, Costello, stop it. Oh, I'm sorry about your car, Lena, but I bought you a present. Here's a quart bottle of channel number five. A quart bottle? Mm-hmm. Costello, that's awfully extravagant. Why, oh. a dram would have been enough. Well, I guess I'm just one of those fellas that don't give a dram. <laughs> you in the dark, I just inhale and come in on the beam. <laughs> oh, Costello, I'm fed up with you. Goodbye. Now Lena's walked out on me, too. Everybody's getting hey, this, mad at me. This is certainly a busy day. Hey, another car just pulled up to the uh, grease rack. Hey, Bob. Uh, why, it's Ken Niles and Mrs. Niles is with him. Hello, Mrs. Niles. Hello, Mr. Abbott. We came over to try your new station. No, I see you have a nice stack of tires there. Oh, my mistake. That's Mr. Costello. <laughs> Get out the brass knuckles, kids. This is the main event. <laughs> now, you wait a minute, Costello. Don't you start any fights with my wife. You keep on of this, Kenneth. I wear the pants in our family. Gee, I thought you said I could wear them tonight. <laughs> well, well, Mrs. Mrs. Niles, what can we do for you? I want to leave my car here to be greased. I'll pick it up in the morning. Uh, come on, Kenneth. I want to get home. You know, I just had my hair washed. Gee, your hair looks lovely. No kidding. I could tell you just had it washed. Oh, you could? Yeah, the laundry tag is still tied to your bangs. <laughs> oh. oh. You better have that car greased and ready for me at 8 o'clock in the morning. Come, Kenneth. Do you hear me? Come along, Kenneth. Give him a little time, will you? His leash is caught around the gasoline pump. <laughs> Wait, I have Kenneth on a leash. Come, Kenneth. Oh, 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 oh. Well, come on, get busy, Costello. Now look, Abbott. I just don't know 
Get busy, later. Costello. I can grease Mrs. No. Niles' car. Why do I have to do all the heavy work around here? You know, I'm not a well man. Oh, stop. Now, honest, Abbott, I'm not. I only wish I was as strong as you. Oh, being strong is all in the mind. If you think strong, you'll be strong. Uh, think of Atlas. You'll uh, have a body like Atlas. Think of Hercules. You'll have a body like Hercules. That wouldn't work with me, Abbott. Why not? I keep thinking of Betty Grable. <laughs> And now, Camel's lovely Connie Haynes, repeating one of her best, along the Navajo Trail. Here's Connie. Every day, along about evening, when the sunlight beginning to fail, I ride through the slumber and shadow, along. When it's night and crickets are calling And coyotes are making a way I dream by a smoldering fire Along the Navajo Trail to lie and listen to the music when the wind is strumming a sagebrush guitar when over yonder hill the moon is climbing it always has me wishing on a star well what are you climb into my saddle and ride the Navajo Trail. That's a perfect combination. Like the combination of smoke that tastes right on your tongue and feels right in your throat. And that, by an odd coincidence, would be the smoke of camels. Right, Ken? Well, I think so, but each smoker must decide that for himself. His T-zone must decide. You know, T for taste and T for throat. The zone where smokers test the smoke of any cigarette. Yes, in a cigarette, the smoke's the thing. But only you can judge it. How the smoke on your tongue tastes. How the smoke in your throat feels. Only your T-Zone can tell. For... Experience is the best teacher. Exactly. And a few months ago, when smokers' T-Zones had to sample so many different smokes, countless smokers learned that the costlier tobaccos of camels suited their T-Zones to a T. Yes, they found camels most pleasant in taste, most soothing in the throat. For today, the preference for camels is the greatest in all camel history. In the zone where smokers test the smoke of any cigarette, it's... C-M-E-L-S. Camels are the choice. More smokers are asking for camels today than ever in camel history. Well, uh, Mr. Abbott, is my car all greased and ready? Uh, yes, it is, Mrs. Niles. Uh, Costello, uh, go get Mrs. Niles' car. Uh-oh. Uh, what do you mean, uh-oh? I was afraid she was going to ask for a car again. The car isn't here. My car isn't here? Where is it? Where is my car? I had it out last night. I was testing it, and I had a slight accident. The car is down on Main Street. On Main Street? Well, why didn't you bring it home? It was dark. I couldn't find all the parts. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you wrecked Mrs. Niles' car? How did it happen? I hit a pedestrian. You hit a pedestrian? Oh, how could that wreck the car? The pedestrian was on a bus. <laughs> <laughs> Just where 
Where is the car on Main Street? Between 5th and 6th Streets. Oh, will you be specific? Is it nearer 5th or nearer 6th? It's kind of spread out evenly between them. <laughs> oh, you fool. I suppose the car is a total wreck. I couldn't tell very well. Oh. What do you mean you couldn't tell? When I left, the fire department was sifting the ashes. <laughs> Well, we're not going to stand for this, Costello. You're going to replace my wife's car. We're calling the police. Now, wait a minute, Mr. and Mrs. Niles. I, I, I didn't mean to wreck your car. I'm just a poor little boy trying to get ahead. Well, if you ever get a good one, you'd better hang on to it. <laughs> Mrs. Niles, I'm going to do the gentlemanly thing. I'm going to give you my car. It's a beautiful ten-passenger sedan. You mean ten people can ride in it? No, one rides, the other nine push. <laughs> I don't want your broken-down jalopy. Please, it's a very nice car. Here it is over here, leaning against the wall. <laughs> Come on, hop in, everybody. I'll take you for a spin. All right, all right, Costello. Step on the starter. Okay. you're driving. You're up on the sidewalk. Oh, People you're a stranger. don't drive on the sidewalk. Oh, you're a stranger in California, eh, bud? I love... <laughs> look out, look out. Look out. Give that pedestrian the right of way. Okay. Ah! You big fat dummy. Can't you see where you're going? I got you, didn't I? <laughs> Costello, you blockhead, you bumped in that woman. You told me to. I did not. I said give her the right of way. Oh, I think it says give it to her right of way. <laughs> oh, here comes the motorcycle cop. All right. Officer Melonhead. Where do you think you're going? To a fire? Hey, Abbott, there's a fire. Come on, let's go see it. Costello, there isn't any fire. This guy just told me there's a fire. I did not. I just asked you if you were going to a fire. Sure, I'll go. I like to watch fire. Listen, Shorty, there isn't any fire. Didn't you just ask me if I was going to a fire? Yes, I did, but I always ask that. Whether there's a fire or not? Yes. Let me smell your breath. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you insinuate that I drink? A bottle has never touched my lips. Oh, a cork sniffer. Uh, (laughs) Insulting a police officer, and there's witnesses, too, huh? Who are these two people in the back seat? Uh, that's Mr. and Mrs. Ken Niles. Oh, indeed, and which one is Mrs. Niles? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Officer Mullenhead. I don't go for that kind of remark, which one is Mrs. Niles. These people are friends of mine. I'm taking them for a ride in my car. Hey, Evan, how do you like the guy? Asking me which one is Mrs. Niles. Good for you, Costello. You keep out of this, Ken. (laughs) <laughs> so that's your attitude Well, I'll fix you, officer This man wrecked my car And now he's trying to palm off this old pile of junk on him Oh, he is, is he? Trying to swindle a woman Costello, you're going to jail uh, You are, Costello You've got yourself into it again Well, what's the matter with you? I guess I'm just a failure I'm the kind of person my mother don't want me to associate with I'm just an onion on the hamburger of life I'm just a piece of flotsam going somewhere to get some. <laughs> well, Costello, what are you going to do about the car you wrecked? Mrs. Niles, I'm going to do the decent thing. I'm going to get you a brand new car. What kind of a car are you going to get her? I'll buy a brand new Ford. What's the matter with a Chevrolet? Nothing. Let everybody buy Chevrolets. Just right? Chevrolets, huh? They shouldn't buy any other car, huh? Let them buy Buicks, Cadillacs, Pontiacs, Oldsmobile, Dodgers, Studebakers, Nashes, Packards, Hudson's. Sure. Good. What do you care if Chrysler starves? I don't want Chrysler to starve. Let him sell four million hundred automobiles. Oh, now you want to jam the highway so my wife will have to drive three miles an hour, huh? Look, let it drive 30 miles, 50, 70, 80 miles an hour. I How don't do you care. like this guy? My wife is cockeyed. He wants her to drive 80 miles an hour. <laughs> All right, don't let her drive. Let her walk. Oh, she should walk down the street, have the sailors whistling at her. No, no, I don't want the sailors to whistle at her. Mm, now you don't want the sailors to have any fun, huh? Uh... <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Go on, say it. My wife kisses every sailor in town. Your wife don't kiss every sailor in town. Oh, you know the one she kisses, but you won't tell, huh? <laughs> oh, wait a minute, Melonhead. Wait, where do you take everything I say is switch it for? Switch, huh? Now you're dragging my wife's hair into this. Go on. Tell all the people how ugly my wife looks without her hair. Say it. My no. wife is ugly without her no, hair. No, no, Melonhead. No, I think she's a slick little girl. Oh, 
slick. My wife looks like a billiard ball with legs. Go on. Go on, start a rumor. Tell all the people that I married my wife. I only married my wife for her money. Melonhead, I knew your wife before you married her. She was a pauper. She didn't have a red cent. Now he tells me. <laughs> now, just for that, Costello, I've got a good notion to slap your ears down. Oh, you would have said it if you didn't have the policeman's uniform on. Oh, I wouldn't, huh? No, you wouldn't. No, I'd like to see you take your coat off. Oh, I'll take the coat off. Well, go ahead, take it off. I'll take it off. Go ahead, take it okay, off. Okay, okay, my coat is off. Now. Well, now what have you got to say? Did anybody ever tell you that you have pretty suspenders? Yeah, oh. <laughs> We'll be back for Camel Cigarettes in just a moment. And now, this week's salute in the new series of salutes to the men who won the victory. Tonight, we salute the 38th Cyclone Division, heroes of the recapture of Bataan. In your honor, men of the Cyclone Division, the makers of camels are sending to your fellow servicemen overseas 500,000 Camel Cigarettes. of the two camel radio shows thus honors the different units of the Army, Navy, Marines, and Coast Guard, a total of a million camels sent free each week. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States twice a week, are rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are stationed, and in cooperation with the Good Neighbor Policy also to Central and South America. Listen next Thursday when Camel again presents Abbott and Costello. And now here are Bud Abbott and Lou Costello with a final word. Well, Costello, Mrs. Niles is still waiting here. She wants to know what you're going to do about that car of ours that you smashed. Yes, Costello, I simply can't get along without transportation. Why, I've never walked anywhere in my life. When I first came to California, I drove clear across this great country. Well, gee, I can't get you the kind of transportation you had when you came out here to California. And why not? They don't make covered wagons anymore. Good night, folks. Good night, Good night Abe Green. Don't forget, buy your victory Good night, Abe and Patterson. Good night. Good night, everyone. week for another great Abbott and Costello show, brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, try camels in your tea zone. See if they don't suit your taste, your throat, to a tea. Cold weather and pipe smoking somehow go together, especially if you can settle by the fire and take it easy. But you want the right kind of fire in your pipe, too. The cooler, slow-burning fire of Prince Albert tobacco. Prince Albert burns slowly because it's crimp cut. A special no-bite treatment takes out the parch and sting, lets you enjoy the rich, mellow flavor of Prince Albert as often as you wish. Do you wonder why Prince Albert is the world's favorite? Try it just once, and you'll know. And be sure on Saturday night to tune in the great Prince Albert radio show, Grand Old Opry, Coast to Coast on NBC. Costello Show for Camel Cigarettes will be back at this very same time next week. Don't miss it. This is Ken Niles in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant. Good night. <laughs>